Last time we talked about Git and how to use it in a very basic way, but today I'm going to continue those talks and we're going to look at more advanced topics like making your own branch, making a pull request, what is a pull request, uh, why would you do it, and what's the benefits, and then mainly how to ship code around between these different branches. Because oftentimes when we're working on a project, we might be in larger teams, so it's important that we have our own version and we're submitting code and there's a review process, or maybe we want to make different environments and separate code from a development or in a staging or a production environment. So we might make different branches for those and managing the code and the fixes around these different environments is really important. So we'll get into that today. And if you have not already, make sure you go back and you watch those other videos, at least the Git basics video. You'll definitely want to check that one out. So let's go back to our Git tips file here um, from the last video. And we're not using code here. We're just using this markdown file just to demonstrate the Git tips. I mean, just to demonstrate the whole Git workflow here and I'm using the command line. You might be more comfortable with a GUI interface, but I think if you learn just these commands, you'll know any GUI interface. We'll notice I'm on uh, the master branch here, and again, this is the first branch that any Git repository has, so if you just make a Git repository, it's always gonna have the master branch, like the default branch. Um, to make a new branch, I'm just gonna say git checkout dash b, and then I'm gonna say development. I'm gonna call this new branch development. And the dash b just says, hey, make a new branch and then throw me into it. And we can see switch to new branch development. I can say git status. And we can see we are on de uh, development. And now there's nothing different than this in master. It's just another copy or another clone of the master branch. And so again, this is just a saved version. If you're not familiar with the git terms, again, this is just a version of our code. So for what I like to do is break my projects into a couple different branches to have a development branch where I have a lot of activity and where I'm coding a lot. And even if you're on your own project, I like doing this and you don't need, you just keep developing on this one branch. And then when you're happy with some changes, you merge them or you bring them into the master branch and you spit out a new version. And the master branch is reserved for production code, code that's stable. That's the code that you're actually deploying that your users are actually using. So, um, how do we do this? How do we have a branch where we develop code on and then say, okay, I'm ready for these changes to go into the master branch. Let's just pretend we added some features here. And so we'll, we'll say git status. We could see there's changes, git add, git commit. And these are terrible commit messages because they're very vague, but this is just a demonstrating again what the purpose of a Git workflow in different branches are. We have committed them. So we added, we committed, and now we're going to push them up. Okay, so we have a new branch in called development. You can even see right here, new branch development. And so now when we go into Bitbucket or GitHub, whichever one you're using, uh, if you go to the commit history, you can actually see your change adds new feature and you can see this little tag development. It made a new branch of development, which contains all those from master and now our new one. So if we go back into master here, oh, it wants to pull it up. No, it's master. You can see it does not have that change because we've left that version alone. We've said, okay, this is our production code. We know this runs well. Now we're adding new features to it. So we're going to go ahead and jump on this development branch, and that's where we're, all of our work is going to be. So let's say you've made those changes, you have your awesome feature, and now you're ready to get those into master. So how do I get the changes from this one branch into the master branch? Well, you typically make a pull request. Now you can merge them, and that's the command to you know get it into master, but we want to put a process to this. We want some other developer to review those changes we're bringing in. We want to maybe see more in detail what all the changes are. So I always like making a pull request and then having another developer look at these changes and give them a, me a peer review um, and maybe they can see something that I don't. And, uh, and other developers, a junior developer can learn from this experience when you're sharing code and you're saying, hey, look at this feature I added, this is how I implemented, and it's also a teaching lesson. So there's a lot of great reasons to make a pull request and that's what we're gonna do now. So let's go to my branches. And you would do this in GitHub as well. You just, you know, make your branch, push it up, and then come to the interface here, Bitbucket or GitHub, whichever one you're using, and you can make your pull request from here. Oh, actually, there's a pull request tab here. So there's no open pull request. I'll just create one. And automatically it kind of detected that I have a development branch and a master branch, and it's made, you know, the distinction here. And this is where I would select anyone. So I have a staves fix branch. Maybe I have a fix I'm trying to bring in, or whatever have you. 
Uh, so we'll say development, it adds a new feature. And if I was in a larger team, I'd say, okay, let's have, um, no, you don't see anything here. You would type your team members here to, for reviewers. Um, and you'd say, hey, look at this code and they would get a notification of some kind. You can choose to close it, which just means it deletes it from the uh, remote branch here on Bitbucket because it kind of, once you make so many pull requests, you can have a lot of branches and it gets really cluttered. Create the pull request. And so we, now we see that we have no pull request from me uh, to the master branch. We'll select it and we can see those changes. So now if I was a junior developer, like I said before, I could see these changes in more detail and I'd be like, oh, that's how he did X, Y, or Z. If I was a more senior developer, I could offer some you know, tips, be like, hey, why did you leave all this white space here? And we can have a discussion on that. You can comment on it. And so you can have a more detailed process. And so after you were happy with those changes, you would say approve and you can say merge uh, and you can merge it straight into the master branch from the interface here. Um, I would recommend that you merge it locally and test it before you just assume the code work together because once you merge it, you might have all these changes together now and you just want to test it locally and make sure you're not killing any systems. But for this purpose, the, for the purpose of this demo, we'll go ahead and just say merge. We'll close the source branch. Actually. And so now these changes are in master. If I go to my commits, we can see in the master branch, we have this merge and you can visually see the change. When I went to dev, I added a new feature and then I brought it back into master. And so now that we have two branches, we have our development branch and this is where all of our work is going to go into. This is where all feature pull requests will come into. And then we have a master branch where all of our stable code is uh, going to live. Uh, development becomes our upstream branch, right? This is where all of the changes go into and they flow down into master. And that's important to know because a lot of the documentation you will read will refer to the upstream branch and the downstream branch. So the master branch just becomes the downstream branch in this case, and your development is the upstream branch. So when we made those changes from development into master, we made a merge, as you can see here, merged in development, and it made this extra commit. And so when you're doing the pull request through Bitbucket or GitHub, that's exactly what it's doing. It's just using the git merge command. So we'll show you how that works now uh, locally, because if development's the working branch, usually we're making feature uh, branches and we're doing pull requests into those uh, develop that main working branch of development. I'm on development. I'm going to do another branch. So I'm going to say git checkout dash B uh, feature. Okay, so I made another branch, I made a feature branch, and I pushed those up. So now this is one commit ahead of my development branch, and I'm happy with the changes. So again, I'm going to go back into uh, Bitbucket here. I'm going to make a pull request. So I have my feature branch, and it's trying to do it into master, but I actually want to do this into development because development is my most upstream branch. It's where all my changes are going to go into, um, and this is just purely a feature branch. It's awesome. And again, I can put any reviewers here. Uh, I'll close the feature brands. Once I've merged it, I'll create it. And again, the approve here is just to kind of mark that, hey, I looked at it. If other developers need to approve it, more than one need to approve it, it doesn't really do anything other than marking it. So you could, in fact, just hit merge. But instead of hitting merge here, I'm actually going to do the merge locally and just show you how that happens if you need to move code around. So we're on the feature branch. I'll go into development. And I always like to make sure I have the latest and greatest code for the branch. Okay, I do. And so while I'm in development, I can say git merge feature branch. And this says bring in all that code from the feature branch and put it into my development branch. You could also do a rebase. Um, I'll go into that in another video. That's a fancier way to do a merge. The merge is going to add a new commit line in our Bitbucket history. And some people really don't like this because it kind of kind of dirty up the history and it's kind of confusing to see what happens. 
and especially because it's going to merge it into a different timeline and so it's hard to go and go back other than a rebase stacks those changes on to the very top of our git him commit history and we don't see that merge uh, commit but there are some pitfalls of doing a rebase but for now we'll just do the merge so i'm going to merge that in adds more features from the feature branch and i'll simply push those up to development and if i refresh this pull request it'll even show me that it's now merged so I don't even need to do anything. I can go to commits. And go to the master branch. And we'll go to development branch. Adds features. So just to finish it up, we'll take all these changes we've been doing in uh, the development branch and we'll bring them into master. And so we could again do it locally. We don't necessarily need to come to Bitbucket and make the pull request. We can just do the merge from dev into master locally on our computer and then push it up. But again, this is a nicer way to kind of have more of a report. And you'll see um, when we go to make the pull request from development into master, we can see those commits. Uh, I mean, again, these are terrible commits, but you should have more meaningful messages and you can kind of see uh, once you create that pull request, review it in full detail and make sure, okay, these are all the changes that we're going to be bringing to the the master um, the branch for this new release and we can see okay we had a new file added we had some new lines added we can see all the commits um, and it says it's one behind master so what is this commit so the difference between these is that one commit that master already had master by doing a merge you are introducing a new commit into the uh, the branch if I can even get around here so it says it's one commit behind master, but that one commit is the previous merge. And so we don't necessarily need that. So this is what the one commit is. We have this merge of uh, previous before when we put dev in. And so this is why most people favor the rebase because you do not get these kind of merge commits and you won't get this one commit. So it can be kind of deceiving, um, but we can just go to this pull request. I'll prove and merge this again, usually better to merge it locally, but we're just, it's just a text file. And now it's approved and it's in there. And so if we looked on our master, we have the new file and the git tips. We can see all these changes we've added in development. So I think that's going to cover it for this video. In the future, I think we'll cover what happens with conflicts, what happens when you have two people working on the same file, what happens when you have the development branch update and you're on the feature branch and you have conflicts, how do you resolve these kind of things? So I think that'll be the next one. Hope you enjoyed this. I hope it was useful to you. Subscribe for more.